Go now to our reading of the scripture, and before we read, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word, and as we read it this day, we ask that you would bless it to our understanding. Help us, Lord, to hold it to our hearts and be doers of it as well as hearers of it. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our first passage comes from 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, and I'll be reading from the Amplified Version of the Bible, which amplifies things so it's better understood. And the other readings will be from New Revised Standard. But 2 Thessalonians 2, 3. Let no one in any way deceive or entrap you, for that day will not come unless the apostasy comes first. That is, the great rebellion and the abandonment of faith by professed Christians. And the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction, the Antichrist, the one who is destined to be destroyed. Then Jeremiah chapter 6, verses 16 and 17. Thus says the Lord, stand at the crossroads and look and ask for the ancient paths where the good way lies and walk in it and find rest for your soul. But they said, we will not walk in it. Also, I raised up sentinels for you. Give heed to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we will not give heed. And finally, from 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and to the day of eternity. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be unto God. <clears throat> I think I told some of you that I went to an audiologist last week and found out I had some hearing loss. So I've been thinking about getting a little older. Uh, and what that means. I've looked up some of my friends on Facebook, and man, all of them have gotten old. I don't know what's wrong. They got so old. Uh, I think I look just the same, but still. But I saw some things that were interesting. It says, you might be old if you can remember these things. If you can remember candy cigarettes. You know, we don't have the real ones or candy ones anymore. Uh, if you remember soda pop machines that dispense glass bottles. You might be getting older if you remember party telephone lines. Party <laughs> yeah. And you might be getting older if you remember green stamps. You know, like mm -hmm. I told them the other day when I was young, I was saving up to get a canoe I saw in the H&S store. Having no idea, I would never save enough for that <laughs> And then it might say you might be getting older if it takes two tries to get up from the couch. <laughs> If it takes longer to rest than it did to get tired to start with, if everything hurts and what doesn't hurt doesn't work, if you find out you have more patience in life, but then you find out that really it's just you don't care anymore, if you can sing along with elevator music, if you're cautioned to slow down by the doctor instead of the police, <laughs> and then finally, you might be getting older if your address book has names that mostly start with doctor. And so, uh, as we said the other day in our Bible study here, growing old uh, is not for weaklings. You know, it's, it can be hard on us sometimes, and we joke about it. And a lot of things about getting older are fun. But some things should be better as we grow older. Uh, certainly, we should have more wisdom as we grow older and deeper insight into things. And then, you know, hopefully we have more of a sense of what's more important than what's not as we go on here. Well, today in the sermon, I'm going to talk about growing old, but not in the sense that we might think about. Uh, we'll discuss uh, though, how this particular sense of growing old is good and what to watch out for. And one of the scriptures I read this morning, it said that the Lord will not come again until two things happen. First, there's a great falling away from the church. And second, the Antichrist comes. Going, uh, I'm going to concentrate just for a few minutes on that first one, uh, the falling away from the church. The Greek word there comes from the word apostasia, which is apostasy. And it means a rebellion against the teachings of the church, against what Christ taught, against what the apostles handed down, against the word of God, the tenets of the faith. And it speaks of a rebellion that can either be violent in nature on the one hand, but which more than likely simply means a gentle turning away from, a falling away from 
uh, the things that God has taught to embrace things that are far different. And this can happen slowly and quietly. Uh, and this happens, it sets the stage uh, for the description that Timothy talks about, or Paul talks to Timothy about. And the final generations, if people will not stand for sound teaching, uh, but will seek out teachers who will, uh, you know, scratch their itching ears. And then in another section, uh, Timothy is told about what people will be like in that end time of the great falling away. People will be, he is told, totally self-centered, lovers of money, arrogant, disobedient, ungrateful, unholy, profane, unloving, malicious gossips, devoid of self-control, brutal, haters of good, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, <coughs> holding to an outward form of godliness, although they deny the power of God, for their conduct nullifies their claim of faith. And uh, we can see that. Of course, that's been around since the beginning, a lot of that. But what happens toward the end of time is those things get worse. And this sets up the scene for the Antichrist to come. But the dangers of these things, while they're certainly worse at the end of time, are actually dangers that we face all the time and have from the beginning. There will be a great falling away, as it says in the scripture, in the end of time. But even from the start, uh, there have, I guess you could say, been little fallings away by individuals and by groups. Uh, and those continue on a regular basis, even still yet today. You know, one example of that is that's how cults get started. You know, people fall away from the truth into things that aren't true and end up following folks like Jim Jones or David Koresh or others. But you don't have to go that far in order to fall away from the faith. Again, it can be slower and quieter, much more subtle than that. So how do we avoid falling into these traps and pitfalls that will pull us away from the faith? Well, Peter tells us in the scripture that we read this morning that we are to grow into the Lord, to grow in his grace and in his knowledge. We grow up, grow stronger, grow older in knowledge of the Lord by the grace of God. As Paul puts it in another passage, we are to give up drinking just the milk of what is taught and begin to eat the meat. We're to move on to the stronger teachings of the Lord. We grow into the Lord certainly on the one hand, by experience. You know, as we face more situations as Christians, we better know how to handle those and how to face those. But we also have to grow from a strong and onto a strong foundation. Our first foundation, of course, is Jesus Christ himself. And then we have a foundation, uh, which is, you know, those things in our lives uh, which help us to grow as Christians. Basic things. Uh, which are not always easy or popular, but which work. And those things are like prayer, and studying God's Word, and applying it to our lives, and worshiping God, and obeying God, and being faithful to God. And it's kind of like when you exercise. When you first start exercising, it's really hard because your body's not used to it, and it'll do anything to get out. Of doing the exercise, you know, and your mind will too. You'll think of a hundred other things you got to do rather than do that. Uh, exercise hurts sometimes because it requires more than you're used to doing. But then you get more comfortable with it, and you reach kind of a plateau, and you realize that if you're going to lose more weight or get more stronger in shape, you have to kind of stretch yourself a little bit more and move on. It's kind of the same way in the faith. When we really start doing these things that God asks us to do, it can be hard. Uh, but the more we do them, the, the easier they become to us, and we can reach kind of a spiritual plateau. And then we realize that from that point, God wants us to stretch our faith a little more and do a little more and apply more of his word to our lives. And so uh, sometimes we may have to push ourselves to study God's word, to pray, to obey the Lord, but kind of like exercise, these things in the long run will be of great benefit to us. And as we grow in the Lord, we need to be careful that we grow not into fanciful new teachings, uh, but into what are called the old ways that Jeremiah speaks of. Now, of course, there aren't really any new teachings in the church. What we have are new ways of conveying those so that people understand them. But, you know, God's Word's been the same. We understand that some things better as we go. But we need to be careful. Scripture tells us to test the spirits of whatever teachings may be that are given to us. 
but we are safe when we go into the old ways that we read about, uh, as God tells Jeremiah to tell his people. You know, go into the old ways, into the ancient paths, he says, and there you will find rest for your souls. And so we are to be, in a sense, in God, growing old, or growing into the old and ancient paths of God, into the old ways, the old paths, the old truths that God has given us. We need, I guess you could say, as the old song puts it, that old-time religion. Now let me stop here with a disclaimer for a moment. By the old ways, the old paths, the old truths of God, what I mean are the ways and paths and truths of God, not of humans. Sometimes old human ways, which we sometimes call tradition, are good, and sometimes they're not so good. Human traditions can be good in that they connect us with our ancestors. Uh, traditions can be good because we don't have to reinvent the wheel. You know, Our ancestors came up with a good way of doing something, we can keep on doing it that way. Uh, so human traditions can be powerful and helpful, but we need to realize those are only human traditions and not God's Word. We have to be careful because sometimes human traditions can be harmful. They can be outmoded, and sometimes they can be just plain wrong. I told you before about the church. I, uh, I didn't preach at it, but they were in churches near where I was, and they actually said, Jesus saves and Jesus shaves. In other words, if you had a beard, you weren't going to heaven. Now, where this came about, I don't know. I imagine it probably came back during the 60s and 70s when rebellious people grew beards, and they didn't want any part of that, so that became their tradition not to have bearded people. Uh, but if you look in the Bible, those people wore beards, and if you want to look for specific rules, it actually says, you know, not cut your beard. That was for the Israelites in their time, though not for us. And so when I talk about the old-time religion, I'm not talking about human traditions like that that get all mixed up with God's Word. But I'm speaking of those things that God has given us clearly in His Word. We need to return to that old-time religion, to those old paths, because over time, we can kind of lose sight of those important and central things. We can come, become distracted by this world easily. Uh, sometimes this world can rule our days and nights. And we find ourselves run by its clock or caught up in whatever it's doing uh, to the point where sometimes we can't even sleep because of it. We can come distracted sometimes by things that we've added to the old ways. Things that may at one time have been good, but which now may be stumbling blocks. We may have forgotten what is truly important. As my father said, we might be majoring in minor things. And I am good at that. I get all caught up in some minor detail, and I find out that's not really that important why I'm bothered with it. Uh, we may sometimes get bound up in rules and regulations and allow fear and worry to rule over us. Or we can get caught up in maybe some fancy new teaching or trend or fad that might end up leading us away from the central beliefs of our faith rather than grounding us in them. Sometimes in every area of our life, we just need to simplify to get rid of the stuff that's bogging everything down and concentrate once again on the basics. Uh, go back to square one. And this is something that you have to do yourself. We have to do it ourselves with God's help. Uh, others can't do it for us. Others can help us, but others can also hinder us. Even with good help, though, it is still up to us to do it. Our parents can't do it for us. Our grandparents can't do it for us. Our preachers, our teachers can't do it for us. Just as nobody else can lose our weight, uh, spiritually speaking, nobody else can pull our weight. We have to ourselves read God's Word and study it and apply it to our lives. And we need ourselves to check out what others tell us it says. Check out even what I tell you it says. Hopefully I'm telling you the truth because that's what I think I'm doing, but I'm human. Who knows? You know, I might get... You know, Denise man hit me in the head with a skillet last night. And, you know, I could be going off the deep end. And people may not know that. And so you need to check out what everybody says by the word. Make sure it's real and true. Now, she would never hit me with a skillet. But you need to check out these things yourself. Because that's, you know, you can't, you need to let God's Spirit speak to you about it. And we can do it, though it's hard work. But we have God's grace to help us. And the good thing, the best gift of all, 
is that God wants us to do these things. And so if God wills it for us, he will so gladly join in in helping us to do these things. When you read in the scripture, you see that when Abraham died, Isaac had to take over as the head of the household and had to leave where he was living with the family. And they had to go back to where they lived before. And he found himself having to dig out the old wells that his father had dug before him. In the meantime, his wells, even though they were full of good water, had been filled up with sand, sometimes by wind and neglect, no doubt, other times by their enemies. And no doubt it was hard labor to dig out those wells again, but it was fruitful labor because those wells brought life-giving, thirst-quenching water. Sometimes our old life-giving spiritual wells can sometimes be filled up with the sand of time or disuse or clogged by other things. So we need to clean out those wells. And let's grow into the old ways. And there, find the peace and purpose that the Lord meant for us from the beginning. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your scripture showing us the way and showing us Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. Help us, Lord, to grow into the ways and paths you have set before us, to concentrate on those major things, to live within the major tenets of your faith, and not in the minor things that can so bog us down. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.